Today, our champion, Ray McGurk of East Boston, faces the challenge of Mike Brutus of Manchester, New Hampshire, on Hamilton Bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Candleton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and just about everybody knows by now that this program is on videotape. We sometimes tape it several weeks before you actually see the telecast, and we do it now here at the Fairway Sports World in Natick. It's always three strings of Candleton Bowling, total pinfall determining our winner. He's rewarded with a handsome marble base trophy from the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. The runner-up receives a smaller but otherwise identical version to indicate he was a participant on our show. The guaranteed money... That's $1,150. $700 goes to the winner. $300 goes to the runner-up. There's $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously, should they tie, they would split that at $25 apiece. And the man with the most marks, our marksman of the day, will receive a $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores. Lots of other ways to make money. I'll tell you about that as the show continues. But right now, let's meet today's bowler, shall we? Come on, Ray. You, you can get up here, too, just because you uh, almost blew us out of here last week. We we're coming on here for the very first time. Uh, and you waited, what, 15 years? Yeah, know? 15 years to get on here. And, Mike? It's been six hours on and many years before that. Uh, just tell the folks how difficult it is now. Because, you are I mean, you're, you're a bowler who has rolled a 228 and a 500 triple, and, and yet you've been on once before. Huh? Right. The hardest thing is you qualify in your area, and they take, like, the top three bowlers. And then you go to a final roll-off, and there's anywhere between 40 to 50 to 60 guys, and only one guy goes. How about that? And I bet you've been runner-up or second or third many times. Did you yes, times? yes. Too many times. Okay. Just tell me one thing. Was the 228 was part of the 500? Yeah, right. It was what a string. One of those days. And this guy last week had 323 after two? We should have a powerful, powerful match today. I hope so. Good luck to both of you. We'll get started right after this. All right, here is our challenger, Mike Brutus, leading off. Mike from Manchester, New Hampshire, has a league average of 123. Seven, ten split piece of wood is, what's it going to do? If it stays somewhere in the middle, he'll be able to carom it to get the seven and have the ball go over and get the ten. That's what he's going to hope to do. Nope, didn't quite work. That's like reading a putt that's got a little hump in between it. You've got to try to decide just exactly where to aim it. Okay, so it's uh, a ten box. As I said, Mike's high single is 228 and high triple 500. <sighs> Fantastic bowling. He's representing the Londonderry Lanes in Londonderry, New Hampshire, and the Lakeside Lanes in Manchester. This looks like a spare with the five pin, two pieces of wood. Out in front, roll-off score 679. And that, of course, is a five-string roll-off. So he's on the board with his first mark. Now, Ray McGurk, who made his first appearance on our show last week, and uh, in doing it, rolled a four three oh a 430 323 he was after two spare leave on the left hand side two pin and four pin with wood Ray is representing the Malden Square Bowdrome he has a spare he's a printer with Copy Quick Incorporated married and has one son He had a 705 in winning his roll off. Bonus. Big, big nine. As a result of that 430, that moves him into third place for our championship show, the live show on August 23rd here at the Fairway Sports World in Natick. Remember, that's for the first prize of $10,000, total prize money of $20,000. Two marks in a row, and a, any combination of strikes or spares totaling three in the same string establishes a bonus of $50. Then each subsequent consecutive mark in that same string is worth $50 apiece, as long as he can keep it going. All right, our challenger, Mike Brutzos of Manchester, New Hampshire.
He gets a nine drop on his spare and has the ten, which is usually the more comfortable single corner pin for a left-hander, as the seven would be for a right-hander. Nine box. He didn't touch it. The ball came back and hit it, but it has to make fair contact with either a wood piece of wood that's down or a standing pin before it crosses the barrier into the pit. So that did not count. Four horsemen, right side and the seven pin. Mike is a Parks and Recreation employee from the city of Manchester, New Hampshire. He's married and has one child from a previous marriage. Oh, he slid it across but didn't get it. And that is a nine box also, as he went into the gutter and then came out in order to get that seven pin. Hoping for three marks in a row, Ray McGurk. Our defending champion. Nope. Nine box. Still no bonus money. Four pins on the right out of there. The other six are still there on the left side. Nope, no mark there. A ten box. That brings us to the time where we take our first good look at the scoreboard, as they are doing right now. And the end of four in the first string. Our defending champion, Ray McGurk from East Boston, 53. Our challenger, Mike Brutzos from Manchester, New Hampshire, 47. Here's our challenger, Mike Brutzos, on the line, fifth box, first string. One, two, four, and seven. Piece of wood rolling back now in back of the one and two. Yes. Pretty spare. That's his second mark. Six, is it going to be seven? Nope, just six. Four horsemen, right side. Ooh, ten pin didn't go, and it looked as if he had a perfect hit. It's a ten. Ray McGurk. Last week when I gave you the 1986 state champions, I mentioned that Shelley Carr had come in second in the ladies all events, and uh, she was third in the ladies singles. That brings to mind that her daughter, Laura Carr, has won her first bowling trophy. Spear, coming up. Laura won her first trophy here in the uh, the junior league at Fairway Sports World in Natick. Her team came in second, and she won an individual trophy. So congratulations to Laura, who seems to be following in her mother's footsteps as a fine bowler, candlepin bowler. 
Congratulations, Laura. And, of course, to Shelley. Is it going to go? Yes. As the wood rolls back. So it's two marks in a row for Ray McGurk. Mike Rutzos, today's challenger. Five pin rocking back and forth more and more, but nope, it's not going to go. Think of that piece of wood where not in back of it, it would go, but it's sort of steadying it. Spare in the seventh. His third mark. He's now at 83 here in the seventh box, plus what he gets on the next ball. Two full on the head pin. He punched out four and left the spread eagle. One, five, eight, and nine. Out of there. Still five pins up, and he'll go for the three on the right. Gets just two of them, so it's a seven box. Not much profit there when you get a four for a fill and you roll a seven in the box. Ninety-four through eight. Ray McGurk, our defending champion, is already at eighty. Plus this. Seven more. 87. That's in completed boxes. Seven more, obviously, here. Nope. Good try. Scott Philbrick is keeping score on that big scoreboard today, and John Boyle keeping score beside me. Strike! Peg Philbrook is our statistician today. Joanne Panto is our secretary. Phil Rubin is our producer and director. Don Riley filling in again this week for Ralph Stewart as our lob line judge and referee. Nice shot, a beautiful spare. Mike Bruxos. Strike. All right, he's at 124. Two bonus balls to row. And should he spare, it's worth $50 in bonus money. Boy, so close to another strike. And three strikes in a row, in addition to being worth $50 for three marks in a row, has an additional bonus of $1,000. All right, he's got a single pin here that's worth $50. Yes! $50 in bonus money for Mike Brutzos. And we'll have to wait to see if his 134 will be enough to win another $50 for winning the string. Two bonus balls coming up. For Ray McGurk, he punches out the one, five, eight, and nine, and leaves the spread eagle. Takes the right side down. That's a total now of seven for the fill on the strike. One more, eight. Well, if he's to win the string, he is going to have to mark. 
He made two hundred dollars in bonus money last week while rolling his four thirty. Here's a chance to mark. Two, four, seven, and eight with wood. Yes. Okay, he did it. He's at one thirty-two and only a gutter ball or a one ball punch out would keep him from winning or tying the string. Six more. One thirty eight. Give him another fifty dollars in bonus money. Give him. he wins the string and gets congratulations from Mike Brutos. Two fine strings. By both our bowlers today. There you see them, a 138 and a 134. So at the end of one, our defending champion, Ray McGurk of East Boston, is leading challenger Mike Brutzos of Manchester, New Hampshire, 138, 134. Defending champion on the line, he's Ray McGurk of East Boston, leading off in the second string. Look at it rock. It's still rocking. But there are too many pieces of wood around it. They have it surrounded. They're keeping it up. Spare to begin. Remember, the bowler with the most marks, our marks of the day, will receive a $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. Six. This one always looks easier than it is. This is two, four, five, and seven. Nope. That always, it looks like a piece of cake, but it isn't. Nine. Mike Brutzos, today's challenger. One of the few bowlers who has ever rolled a 500 triple and bowled better than 225. He played it from right to left rather than going for the two pin, hoping that uh, he'd be able to get a little action out of some of the already fallen wood. I guess to be correct, I have to say felled wood because it was knocked death down. It didn't fall by itself. I'm sure that at least one English teacher will send me a note. I try. One and ten. Oh, they're still there. All right, here's our defending champion, Ray McGurk, on the line again. He had spear six and then a nine. Another big hit and a single pin, the six, to pick up for a spare. That's his second mark, second spare. Hasn't been able to put three together. He had two together in the first and second in the first string and in the fifth and sixth. He also picks up, picked up last week an extra $100 for bowling a 400. Seven is his fill. 
on the spare. Let's see what he can do here with the four, seven, and ten. Just the four goes. Seven still there. It's a nine. All right, Mike Rutzos is faced with 51 pins in the four boxes so far by Ray McGurk, so he'll have to do something in these two if he's going to catch up. Almost a backdoor strike. The head pin is still standing. Fair in the third. 28 plus what he gets on the next ball. Six. No wood to help. The object pin becomes the three. He has three, six, ten. And then all by itself over on the left, the four pin. Can he kick that three over to get it? No, not quite. For a ten? No, it's a nine. And one more time, we will take a check on the scoreboard as they look over there. They're looking at that, which shows that after leading by four pins uh, after the first, 138 to 134, Ray McGurk, our defending champion, has added to that lead another eight pins. He leads here, 51-43. Ray McGurk on the line now to roll in the fifth box of the middle string. He's the defending champion and rolling first in the middle string. Four horsemen, right side, plus the eight pin. Not an easy spare lead by any means. Backdoor action. Got it. And he'll take it. Spread ego. Boy, we're seeing a lot of those. Just four pins. Boy, great try. He took the three out on the right and... Flew that three pin over, knocked out the four, but the two and seven were still there. However, he makes a ten box out of it. Mike Brutzos has the one, nine, ten. Some wood over on the left, three pieces, and one piece of wood in front of the ten. Nope, nine didn't go. At the conclusion of our show, our home viewer jackpot, that's the one where folks at home are sending in cards... Trying to guess what the total pinfall will be. Both bowlers combine on a day that they hope their card will be chosen. That's up to 200. Excuse me, to 100. And the uh, high-low jackpot, the 1710, is up to 225. At the halfway point, at the end of 15 boxes, our defending champion, Ray McGurk, leads by 16 pins. Now, Mike Brutzos, using the three pin as an object here, he has three, five, seven, and nine with some wood. Didn't use the wood at all, and got the 
three, five, and nine, but the seven is still there. Not anymore. An interesting note from one of our legally blind viewers. As you know, we always have that controversy about some people think I talk too much, and then other people who are legally blind, totally blind, or uh, sight impaired, are always so appreciative of the fact that I try to describe for them what's up there for the bowler. And one of them, in addition to thanking me for doing that, said that she, in addition to the fact that I describe it for her, she feels that she can tell when it's going to be a good hit because her hearing, obviously, that usually does happen. If a person is sight impaired, then the hearing is enhanced. Said that she can usually tell by the way the sound of the ball going down the lane. She can almost feel as if it's going to be a good hit. I thought that was an interesting point. It's a spare. Another one for Ray McGurk. That's his fourth here in the middle string. So far, Mike Brutus has the one in the third box, and that's all. So Ray is adding to his lead. Thin hit to the right side by the left-hander, Mike Brutus. And he has... Seven pins still standing, including number one. And one and two still standing. So he knows that he has to do some work if he's in the last three boxes, if he's going to come anywhere near what he did in the first. All right, Mike now has moved to lane three here at Fairway Sports World in Natick. Three pins to pick up. One, three, six. Piece of wood all by itself on the left, rolling. Now stopping, and obviously he cannot roll until... That stops. Those are the rules. Made it. Spare in the eighth. So he will be trying, obviously trying, according I don't mean to <laughs> imply that he hasn't been trying all along, but he'll be really trying to mark out. Bonus for Ray McGurk. Six pins, and he has the four horsemen on the left side to convert for another mark. It's a nine box. That gives him one ten. He rolled a one thirty eight opening string. Punched out the three the middle of the three pins that he had standing there. Last week, he started with a 164 and rolled a 159 second string for a total of 323 after two. 119 here. Mike Frutzos. He's working on a spare, so this will be a bonus ball. Thin hit. Six, but more important to him, tough split. One, three, four, seven. Well, he hit the object pin, which was the one, but it didn't touch the uh, three pin. 
And obviously, by not touching it, didn't get an angle to kick the pin over in order to get the 4-7. It's a 7 box, which he doesn't need. That puts him at 95. Unless he strikes, Ray McGurk will win the second string in addition to the first. Is he going to strike? Oh, that close. So the very best he could do then would be 115. He shook his head because he came perilously, I mean perilously close to missing that one. 105. And a strike here would give him 115. So Ray McGurk picks up another $50 for winning the middle, the middle string in addition to the first. Seven more for Mike. 112. And so the score at the end of two. Our defending champion, Ray McGurk of East Boston, with his 119, opposed to Mike Bruto's 112, is leading by 11 pins, 257 to 246. All right, here's the third string of our match, and leading it off is today's challenger, Mike Brutzos of Manchester, New Hampshire. Good spare leave up there now in the two and four. Ooh, too far left. He dropped it a fraction too soon. Hadn't quite followed through. So it's a 10. When you're behind in any sport, then you miss what seems like something that should be easy. It just seems to take on that much more importance. And when you have a spare lead that turns out to be the diamond on the left side, two, four, five, and eight, you know that this is one of the toughest spares to convert. Like that, as Mr. Diamond wins again. Ten. So it's a pair of tens for Mike. And he knows he has to do better than that, especially against this man. Ray McGurk, who rolled a 430 last week and has so far rolled 138 and a 119. He gets a lot of pins to fall. Two, four, and ten. Two pieces of wood between the two on the left and the ten. Got the ten pin, but four pin is still there. Got two, I should say, two and ten, but the four is still there. Nine box. Now the lead is exactly 10. No wood to help, and he has a split here. Three, four, six. Trying to shave that three to kick it over to get the four, and he made it too fine and got just the six. Now the lead is nine. Mike Brutzos coming up. Eight boxes to go. Nine pins separating our bowlers. Challenger Mike Brutzos. No wood to help. And he has one, two, six on the right, four and seven on the left. Just two of them. Now he'll go for... The four seven. Nine box.
Same three pins on the right. That is one, three, six. Now he's got seven and eight in the back. Oh, so close to making it, but the seven pin is still there. So that's four boxes of the third string as he's trying to play catch up and he has not had a mark. This is to try to make a, a 10. It's a 9. There was a piece of wood in the gutter, and he hit it before he took the 7 down. Ray McGurk, leading in the match by 9 in completed string, I mean completed boxes. There's a big hit, and he has the 6 pin alone to pick up for a spare. Boy, I tell you, these guys just amaze me. I love to watch them roll that little ball at that skinny pin 60 feet away and hit it smack right in the middle. Bonus. It's how many? You knew I was about to say seven. You could hear that, but I, for a moment, thought it might be eight. Okay, three pins. One, two, four. Yes. Up by 17 now. Mike Brutzos has to do some work here. Two, five, and seven. Spare. His first mark here in the third string. Oh, thin hit. Just four. He leaves six pins standing, and they are the one, three, Four, seven, eight, nine. Three more up. Head pin being one of them. It's a nine box. So not much profit there. And Ray McGurk already leading by 17. He's going to add to that right now. Actually 18 because he's opposite a nine box and he has a spare. So he's up by 18 plus what he gets on this next ball. He gets how many? He gets six. So he's up by 24. Nope, didn't make it. Still one pin there. Ten bucks. Take away four, and uh, he's up by 20. Three, six, four, seven. Just the three out of there. The nine matches the nine by Mike, so it stays a 20-pin lead with four boxes to go. 20-pin lead for our defending champion, Ray McGurk. Mike Brutzos, today's challenger. The three, four, six. Boy, he jumped that three pin over, but he it, he made it jump completely sideways so that it actually went where the two would be and did not get the four. It's a ten box. Now he's down to three.
trailing by 20 pins and down to three boxes. Two full on the head pin. He's got the goal post two and three plus the four and seven. Little piece of wood to the right of the three. Mike tried to use it. Back door, nope. Didn't work. Nine. Ray McGurk gets a tough split. 4-7 on the left, 6-10 on the right. Oh, is he going to get it? It's rocking. The six pin is rocking back and forth. It's still rocking. Wood rolling into it. He's not going to press the button yet. No, it stopped. Ten. Two full, punching it out. Went off to the left that time. It's a six box, opposite a nine, so Mike Brutzos picked up three. It's a 17-pin lead, or in Mike's case, a 17-pin deficit he faces as he comes up for the final two boxes. Big hit, very close to a strike. Single pin to pick up is the four. No doubt about it. A spare. He'll need another mark. He'll need a big fill. He gets seven. Now he has the one, two, and four. He needs to pick these up. Oh, didn't get it. That would seem to do it right there. He had to have two marks. He was trailing by 17, coming into the final two boxes. Ten. One, oh, seven. A punch out. Half was to right. By Ray McGurk. He comes back and makes a spare. He has it won. Seven. Oh, yes. What a way to finish with a beautiful spare. He's won another $50 in bonus money for winning the third string. So he won all three. Now a strike? No. That would have been worth another $50 in bonus money. Mike Brutzos congratulates Ray McGurk. Scotty Philbrick doing his arithmetic over there. He's got his calculator out and trying to figure out what the final totals will be. And the final score with the 119 and 107 added to the previous makes Ray McGurk our winner over Mike Brutzos 376 to 353.
A combined total, 729 today, both bowlers. And uh, we have $100 to give away if somebody comes with either 719 or 739. But regardless, you know what happens if I draw your card. Sure. Mr. Phil Rubin goes into that magic closet, draws out some prizes. Here's what he dug up today. A Regina electric broom. No more vacuuming. From now on, it's the Regina electric broom. The lightweight, easy way to make cleaning a breeze. Regina electric broom makes a perfect gift. And ice and creamy freezer snack bars. The cool and creamy treat you freeze to eat. It's ice and creamy for cool summer fun. And... An Acromill 16-inch toolbox offers premium capacity in a medium-sized box constructed to carry up to 60 pounds of tools. Acromill Toolbox to help out with all home improvements. Okay, let's see. 729 is the number, the magic number we're looking for today for $100. And uh, this one comes from Ralph Walling of Middleton, Massachusetts. 729 is the number. He has guessed 730. How about that? Yeah, hundred dollars. We'll start all over again next week with fifty dollars. And you, Raymond, two twenty-five. If you can knock down those three, take a lane and fire away. You don't want any more money? Oh! Amazing. I thought you didn't want it. Okay, <laughs> Mike, take a shot at it. Raymond, stay over here, please. Oh, okay, Michael, right here. Please stand here and let the folks look at you. Raymond, get up there right behind him. Did I say Ray? Not Raymond. Oh, I'm sorry, I lost my head. <laughs> okay, Michael, you had uh, three marks in a row in the first string and the last uh, uh, three times that you were up there, the last two boxes. So that's the only bonus money I could get from you, huh? I just couldn't get them running. All right, well, $300. Don't wait six years, okay. will you? You get your smaller, smaller trophy from the Ace Trophy Thank Company. You, okay. All right, Ray. Sorry. But I didn't think you wanted to get up there, and then you almost knocked those things down, oh, right? Boy, did I want that. Seven hundred dollars plus one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus money for winning all three of the strings, and a fifty-dollar gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores. Not bad. All right. Thank you. And the big trophy from Ace Trophy Company. Oh, another one. See you next week. Okay. okay Don Gillis for the whole crew. I'll be here. You'll be here too. Bye, bye, everybody. Here's a.